Canada. Over 3 million square miles of land, it stretches from the Arctic Circle to the USA. It is the country with the most coastline in the world, with more than 125,000 miles of it, and within the surrounding seas live a huge variety of animals, including humpback whales, orcas and dolphins. In this video we will investigate these incredible sea mammals, as well as their biology, behaviour and evolution. These are cruel seas. On the far west coast of Canada, near Vancouver Island, many sea mammals live in the North Pacific Ocean. However, the rivers leading inland also provide a habitat for creatures such as Pacific white-sided dolphins. These dolphins are thought to be deep water animals, however, recently they have been seen closer to shore and are moving into more inland waters like these. Pacific white-sided dolphins are incredibly powerful swimmers, and like most dolphins, enjoy bow surfing. They're also known to leap out of the water quite often. These dolphins usually travel in groups of less than 50 individuals and prey on animals such as squid and fish. Fortunately, this is not an endangered species and is considered common. Another animal that was encountered along these coastal rivers was the humpback whale. Migrating through Canadian waters two times a year, these whales usually follow the coast, and in the summer months a portion of the population of humpback whales use the British Columbian seas as a feeding ground. Humpback whales feed on small crustaceans called krill, as well as some species of schooling fish. These whales do not possess teeth, instead using baleen plates to feed. This method of hunting works by the whale taking in a mouthful of seawater, then forcing the water out again, with the baleen plates acting as a filter to keep prey items inside. Humpback whales become sexually mature at nine years old, and female humpbacks will give birth to a calf every one to five years. The females develop a strong and lasting bond with their offspring, and the calves feed on their mother's milk until they are around 11 months old. Unfortunately, the humpback whale is under threat. Entanglement in fishing gear is one of these threats, however the main concern is vessel strikes. In British Columbia, the humpback whale is the most commonly reported species of whale struck by boats. Being hit by a vessel can cause the animal to be scarred or even be killed outright. Luckily, the humpback whale is protected by two international conventions, banning the commercial hunting of the species and the trade of the whales and their parts, so hunting is not a major problem anymore. On the rocky shores of Vancouver Island, sea lions group together. These are stellar sea lions, named after the naturalist who first described them in 1741. This animal's overall range extends all the way from the eastern China coast, north to the Gulf of Alaska and south along America's coast to California. Stellar sea lions are the largest of all the eared seals, and are near the top of the food chain, hunted only by orca and white sharks. Every year, beginning in May, the male sea lions come together on traditional rookeries, which are usually located on islands. About a week after the males have established their territories, the females arrive. The females then move through the different areas and mate with the males that control them. Eventually, during the late summer, the females and the pups they have given birth to leave the rookeries. The pups can stay with their mothers for as long as four years, though usually they will leave sooner. Unfortunately, the western population of stellar sea lions has declined by around 70-80% to 80 since the 1970s, and due to this there has been much study and debate in Alaska. A potential cause for the decrease in numbers is that the sea lions have been affected by overfishing in the Gulf of Alaska, or that there has been an increase in predation by sharks and orca. 
The final species of marine mammal that was encountered in the surrounding seas of Vancouver Island was the killer whale, also called the orca or blackfish. These animals are large predators reaching incredible lengths of about 9 meters for males. There are three different types of orca, which are so different some actually consider them to be different subspecies or even separate species. The first of the three are the resident orca. They are the most often seen of the three, living in coastal waters and feed mostly on fish and squid. These animals live in complex groups called pods and return to the same areas consistently. The next type are the transients, which hunt other marine mammals. They travel in small groups of usually no more than six individuals and swim in larger areas along the coast. They also look physically different to the residents, as the coloured area around the dorsal fin, known as the saddle patch, is grey. The third type are called offshore orca. This variation moves far away from the coast to feed on mainly schooling fish, and may also hunt other marine mammals and sharks. These animals travel in much larger groups, usually about 20 to 75 individuals, but there have been sightings of groups of nearly 200. Killer whales are actually dolphins and not whales as their name suggests, and probably evolved in the last 11 million years. These creatures have a huge range, living in every ocean and almost every sea. Although orcas have been portrayed as dangerous to humans, the only serious attacks on humans that have happened were by orcas in captivity, and no one has ever been killed by a wild killer whale. However, many orcas have been killed by humans. One particular case is the US Navy, who in the 1950s deliberately killed hundreds of orcas using weapons such as rockets and depth charges. The attitudes of the First Nation people, however, is very different, as they all have great respect for the killer whale. The Haida people's mythology tells stories of orcas living in towns under the sea, and that people who had drowned went to live with them. Killer whales are a feature of their long history and a part of their art and spirituality. The wild marine mammals of Vancouver Island are truly incredible, and show just how diverse the animals of the area are, and it is for that reason that it is so important to protect them, and make sure that we don't lose any more species than we already have.